After learning from the experience of the Spanish War, the Soviet Union began designing and building a new generation of light tanks. Unlike the Soviet Union in the early 1930s, which had undergone several years of development, both tank technology and design concepts had undergone revolutionary changes. In 1939, the development of the T-50 light tank began, and it was finalized and approved for production in January 1941. At that time, the T-50 light tank was definitely considered an advanced tank, incorporating many advanced technologies and concepts. In terms of armor protection, it was similar to the T-34 medium tank at the time, strengthening overall defense through systematic arrangement of sloped armor. The hull was made of 37 b millimeter homogeneous steel armor with a slope angle of 40 degrees to 57 degrees. The maximum thickness of the turret was equivalent to that of the hull, and its shape was similar to the early T-34 turret model, providing excellent bulletproof characteristics. For a light tank, this level of protection was considered quite good. The tank was powered by a V4 diesel engine capable of outputting 300 horsepower. Unlike the Soviet light tanks of the 1930s that used automobile engines, this V4 engine had better overall performance, providing the tank with better maneuverability. However, the engine design was not yet perfected and required separate production, which became a weakness of the T-50 tank. The tank's suspension system used torsion bar suspension with six pairs of small diameter road wheels with the drive sprocket at the rear and the idler wheel at the front. In terms of weaponry, it still used a 45 mm caliber main gun with 150 rounds of ammunition stored inside the tank and an additional coaxial 7.62 mm TD machine gun. This configuration was considered standard, but the T-50's biggest advantage was its three-man turret, which was rare among early Soviet tanks in World War II, enhancing the tank's combat flexibility. Furthermore, the T-50 tank was equipped with radio equipment, which was also rare at the time. In the early stages of World War II, only the German army fully equipped their armored forces with radio devices, while other countries' tank forces had relatively lower installation rates. The Soviet army only installed them on command tanks, and their performance was worrisome. The T-50 light tank was produced by factory number 174, weighing 14 tons, with a length of 5.2 meters, width of 2.47 meters, height of 2.16 meters, and a crew of four. It had a maximum road speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Based on the data alone, the T-50 light tank had decent individual combat performance and could even hold its own against the German Panzer III tank at the time. It was more than capable of dealing with the Panzer I and the II tanks. However, relying solely on data could not fully reflect the situation. After the implementation of the Barbarossa plan, only 69 T-50 tanks were produced, and some of them were unarmed. The reason for this situation was that the Soviet army believed that the reliability of this tank still needed improvement. The most important reason was that tank production consumed too much time and materials. The tank's hull production was similar to that of the T-34, while the engine needed separate production. These characteristics made it unable to meet the high consumption of a major war. After the outbreak of the Great Patriotic War, the Soviet Army did not immediately abandon the T-50. Instead, they attempted to upgrade it based on frontline intelligence. After testing against the German Panzer III tank, it was found that this tank had good defense against the Soviet 45mm anti-tank gun. It could only be penetrated at close range. However, for some reason, the Soviet army overestimated the attacking power of the German tanks and believed that the T-50's defense was insufficient. In the upgrade plan, the Soviet army commonly used bolted-on additional steel plates. Through this modification, the T-50's armor thickness reached 57 mm at its thickest point, and with the sloped structure, its defense would be greatly enhanced. The cost was that the tank became heavier and its maneuverability decreased. Another upgraded version of the T-50 was the T-52. This tank had actually been planned shortly after the outbreak of the Great Patriotic War. At that time, the Soviet Army discovered that the 57 Needle 57-meter anti-tank gun, was a formidable anti-tank weapon, 
so they also plan to install this artillery on the T-50. They also simplified and optimized the tank's hull, such as installing a dry clutch and carrying a manual fire extinguisher. Overall, the T-50 was an excellent light tank. However, at that time, the Soviet Union did not have enough time to perfect it, and it did not fit the strategy of attrition warfare after the outbreak of a major war. In the end, it was replaced by the structurally simpler T-60.